No one knows more about politically charged cases in the middle of presidential campaigns than former FBI Director James Comey. I sat down with him for a conversation at his home this week to discuss the legal peril surrounding the former president. You've, you've said that the Mar-a-Lago documents case is the strongest against Trump. And there's new reporting. Prosecutors have a recording from 2021 in which Trump acknowledged he knowingly retained documents that he knew were classified. If you were prosecuting him or just given your experience, how would you use that evidence to help the case? How much does it help a case like that? Yeah, I once said, without planning it, Lordy, I hope there are tapes. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. that. Not about this case, but yes, no, it's very I, applicable. I know. And I've heard that a thousand times since, <laughs> but tapes are amazing for a prosecutor because you can't cross-examine a tape. You can't call a tape a liar, a deep state operative. A tape is you saying what you think, which is why they're so valuable in an organized crime case, and they'll be so valuable and important to Jack Smith in this documents case. I don't know where the case will end up, but it makes it immeasurably stronger to have the subject of the investigation saying in a way that can't be impeached, no pun intended, with Trump, can't be criticized and undermined because it's coming from his own mouth. That's why I once said, Lordy, I hope there are tapes. And Lordy, it's a good thing that there are tapes. Turns out it's an evergreen statement in, yes, it never in many, of, many of these cases. Knowing what you know about Trump and how he operates and acts, I mean, few people have, you know, dove so closely into his mind in some ways. What advice would you give Jack Smith about how to approach this or what to be mindful of? I'm not sure that he needs any. I don't know Jack Smith, mm. never met him, but he doesn't need any advice because he knows, because it's already started, that Trump comes for the rule of law, the system of justice, and the agencies with a flamethrower. He will come and try to criticize and attack your family, your witnesses. There are no limits to what he will try to do to obstruct an effort to hold him accountable. But I'm sure they're prepared for that. It's one of the reasons I'm sure they're being careful to make sure all their I's are dotted and T's are crossed if they're planning to charge this case. You know what it's like to lead uh, politically sensitive investigations around a campaign. Given the current timetable of the cases and potential cases against Trump, of which there are multiple, he could be the presumptive nominee before any of these even go to trial. How concerning is that to you? Concerning to a prosecutor leading an investigation and to the FBI, mm -hmm. because despite history, we desperately don't want to be involved in election time investigations mm -hmm. and near them. And so they are feeling something else that won't be talked about publicly, but I just know the system. Mm -hmm. They're feeling intense pressure to move, to move, to move. So they're not in the position of making a charging decision next year when, when Donald Trump may be the nominee. So I think they are likely working very, very hard and trying to get ahead of where the, even the normal pace of an investigation might be. Can you envision a scenario where Trump manages to win back the White House and justice is delayed? I could. I don't, I don't want to, but I could. I mean, it's this crazy world that Donald Trump has dragged this country into, but he could be wearing an ankle bracelet while accepting the nomination at the Republican convention. And could be wearing an ankle bracelet and be elected in November. Yeah, we could have, it would be rejected if you put it in a script for a show, but you could have a president who is potentially incarcerated when he's elected president. So that would be weird and awkward. And it seems even crazy to be coming out of my mouth, but that's the situation we face. It looks like the Republicans will likely nominate someone who is under serious cred criminal investigation, is indicted, and who knows where that's gonna lead us. But if he is elected and sworn in as, as, as a president, would they pause? Would the would the precedent be that they pause uh, activity or or consideration of these legal cases, or is that up to the jurisdiction of the law enforcement officials at the time? Yeah, there's no precedent whatsoever that I'm aware of. We've never contemplated uh, electing again someone like Donald Trump, and so I don't know what would happen. It's the federal government doesn't control the Manhattan DA or the Fulton County DA, and so none of the normal traditions and norms around respecting the office of the presidency and not distracting the president with criminal charges at the federal level, none of those would be implicated. And I can't imagine a circumstance where the Department of Justice wouldn't, if they're going to charge him, wouldn't have done it so far in advance that we'd have a resolution before he took office. So and, do it in time to so do it this summer, not that you don't have insight into this, but do it this summer. That would mean that they could complete the cases before he were to take, he would take office. Yes, I don't know anything, obviously, but I would predict your summer will be 
don't plan any long vacations as a journalist. You said that Trump poses a near existential threat to the rule of law. And, and this is something similar language that I hear privately from national security officials, some people you and I both know who will say this privately about what a second term could mean. But tell me a little bit about the specifics of what he could try to do. What do you mean by that? Well, think about what four years of a retribution presidency might look like. He could order the investigation and prosecution of individuals who he sees as enemies. I'm sure I'm on the enemies list. Because the president constitutionally does oversee the executive branch entirely, which includes the Department of Justice, prosecutors and investigators. And so he could commission direct that individuals be pursued. He could also direct all kinds of other conduct that people would maybe take to court to try to stop. But who enforces court orders? Mm -hmm. Mostly the United States Marshals Service, which is in part of the executive branch and reports to the president. And so President Trump could say, I don't care what the Supreme Court says or these district judges say. I'm telling the Marshals Service, don't enforce the court order. And so our Constitution really does give a rogue president, which is what this would be, tremendous power to destroy. And so that's why I'm trying to warn people. Given the way he said he intends to operate if he's reelected, this will be something we could never have imagined. Again, it seems like science fiction in a way, but it's what another four years of Donald Trump really promises, which is why people criticize CNN for their town hall. I want the American people to stare at the threat that we're facing and understand that they cannot take the next election off. You were a Republican most of your life, uh, but voted for, and you may still consider yourself one, but voted for Biden in 2020. Do you intend to vote for him again, or is there anyone on the Republican side you might consider if it's not Trump? It has to be Joe Biden, and, and I'm glad he's willing to serve. It has to be somebody committed to the rule of law, committed to the values of this country. And I, I'm not talking about policy. People can disagree about policy. There are things above those disagreements that all of us should think about the same way. The president must be someone who abides the law and our Constitution. And there's no one else but Joe Biden. One of the focuses that seems to have faded from the headlines is the threat of Russia uh, intervening in our electoral process and system. You know, Trump recently said that Ukraine uh, wouldn't say if Ukraine should prevail over Russia. Uh, given his affinity for Putin and his outlook on the war, do you expect or should we expect Russia to interfere on his behalf in 2024 if he's the nominee? Yes, of course. I mean, Vladimir Putin does not want Joe Biden to be president of the United States for reasons that I hope the American people see, because he acts in our national interest. He would very much like Donald Trump to be president again, because Donald Trump is, for reasons I still can't explain, a very, very fond of Vladimir Putin. And so they will find ways to interfere. I hope our intelligence community is equipped to respond, maybe better than we did in 2016, but they'll come for this election. So what should the media be telling the public about how to protect themselves or how to watch for that? What would you wish people were doing out there? I wish people were taking a breath and a beat before accepting something that they see online, especially rumors about people, or I don't know what it'll be over the next year, but documents that have suddenly been discovered mm -hmm. breathlessly. Take it all with a grain of salt, knowing that folks are looking to mess with you. 